A question was asked on a mathematics examination paper that was given to 16-year-olds. And there was quite a number of tweets related to this question after the examination as students found it rather difficult. This video shows how you can work this particular problem out. There are n sweets in a bag. Six of the sweets are orange, the rest of the sweets are yellow. Hannah takes at random a sweet from the bag. She eats the sweet. Hannah takes at random another sweet from the bag. She eats the sweet. The probability that Hannah eats two orange sweets is one third. Show that n squared minus n minus 90 equals zero. Also solve n squared minus n minus 90 equals zero to find the value of n. Well, let's start off by visualizing this particular problem. Here you can see I have a bag and it contains one, two, three, four, five, six orange sweets. And this question mark here represents the number of yellow sweets we have. And of course, we don't know how many yellow sweets we have at the moment. But what we do know overall is a bag contains N sweets, where N obviously is a particular number, and we don't know what that is. And this is one of the things we're going to have to find out, because that's what step B is really asking us to do, is to find the value of N, where N is the number of sweets that are in the bag in total. But of course, the first thing we have to try and show is this one here, where we show that n squared minus n minus 90 equals 0. Let's visualize what happens when Hannah takes another sweet from the bag. And you can see here that we have a sweet missing because it's just been removed. And now we can see we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 orange sweets left. And of course, this question mark is telling us that we don't know how many yellow sweets we actually have at the moment. But what I can say, compared to this bag, this one has one less sweet in it. Consequently, the number of sweets in this bag is going to be the number n, which is how many sweets were in this bag, minus 1. And you can see I'm writing that down here as n minus 1. Now, the chance of taking an orange sweet from this bag is equal to the number of orange sweets that are in the bag, and we know that is 6, divided by the number of sweets that are actually in the bag, and we have already shown down here that that was n sweets, so we divide this by n. Of course, the bag now only has 5 orange sweets in it. And what we now need to do is to work out what the probability is of Hannah taking an orange sweet from this particular bag. Well, it's similar to what we did last time, except the numbers are different. We now have five orange sweets, so this is going to go on top of the fraction, and below it we're going to be dividing by the number of sweets that are actually in this bag, which we've shown down here is n minus 1. So we write here n minus 1. Therefore, this ratio represents the probability of Hannah taking an orange sweet from this bag. And this one represents the probability of Hannah taking a sweet from this particular bag. Now, the probability of Hannah taking an orange sweet on her first selection, followed by her taking an orange sweet on her next selection from the bag, is achieved by multiplying this fraction by this fraction here. So we take the first fraction, write that down, and then multiply it by the next one. And I'll put this in brackets to make it easy to follow. And then I multiply the 6 by the 5 to equal 30. And then, of course, in the bottom, it's n multiplying n minus 1. So we know we have the 30 on the top, and the n times the n is n squared, and n times minus 1 is minus n. So this ratio, this fraction, represents the random selection of an orange sweet on the first selection followed by an orange sweet on the second selection from the bag. If we look to the question, it says here, the probability that Hannah eats two orange sweets is one third. Now, of course, if she's going to eat the sweets, she's got to select them first. So whereas this particular ratio represents the probability of us selecting the two orange sweets, 
as we've already described, it obviously will also represent the fact that she's at the two sweets because we're told that she selects and eats the sweets. So what we can do, we can make this ratio equal to the one third that was given in the question. So we take the ratio we've just worked out and we make this equal to the one third. And now we manipulate this to see if we can get the answer. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to multiply both sides by 3. And of course we will then see that I multiply the 1 third by 3. And on this side we end up with 90 on the top. Because 30 times 3 is 90. And on this side we end up with 1. Because a third times 3 is 1. Now I'm going to multiply both sides by n squared minus n. So when I multiply this side, it's going to be 1 times n squared minus n. And of course, these will cancel on this side, leaving us with 90. And we're going to have one lot of n squared minus n on this side. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take 90 from both sides. And you can see that here, when I have 90 minus 90, it's 0. And this side is going to be n squared minus n minus 90. And of course, we can rewrite that as n squared minus n minus 90 equals 0. And if you look at this, you can see that's exactly what we were asked to prove in the question here. Let's have a go at doing part B of this question, which says solve n squared minus n minus 90 equals 0 to find the value of n. So I'll write the equation out here. n squared minus n minus 90 equals 0. Now we know we're going to have to put this into brackets. So that's going to be n times n to give us n squared. What do I put in to give me minus 90? Well, I'm going to place two numbers here, and I have to make a decision what these are going to be. And I'm going to decide that I'm going to try 9 and a 10. And I also need to know that I'm going to have to have a minus n here. So I choose a plus and a minus sign, and then I make all of this equal to 0. Now I need to check when I expand this, do I get what I originally had? Well, that's going to be n squared. That's going to be minus 10n. And of course, the plus 9 times the n is going to be plus 9n. And then the plus 9 times the minus 10 is going to be minus 90. And all that's going to equal 0. So if I bring the n squared down and have a look at these like terms, well, they're going to give me minus n. And of course, this is the minus 90 that I'm going to bring down. And all of that equals 0. If I write this out more neatly, I end up with n squared minus n minus 90 equals 0. And of course, if we have a look at this, we can see it is what we started off with here. Consequently, what I had in the brackets, what I decided needed to go in the brackets, which I'm showing again here, in fact, must have been right. So all of that equals 0. I am now happy that I've taken the quadratic equation, put them into the two brackets, as you can see, expanded those brackets to prove that I've chosen the correct numbers. Therefore, if I write this out again, I've got n plus 9, and I'm going to multiply that by n minus 10 equals 0. Now, I know there's two solutions here, and one of the solutions is given when I make n plus 9 equals 0, and the other one when I make n minus 10 equals 0. Let's choose the n plus 9, and if I take 9 away from both sides, we then end up with n equals minus 9. If I choose the other one, I've got n minus 10, so I'm going to add 10 to both sides. And here you can then see that we end up with n actually is going to equal 10. Now, there's only one of these numbers that makes any sense, and it's this one here, n equals 10. Therefore, the answer is n equals 10. We don't choose the one that's n equals minus 9, because you can't have minus 9 sweets in the bag. It doesn't relate to this problem. If we wanted to discuss this problem a little bit further, we now know there's 10 sweets in the bag, and we know six of them were orange sweets when we set off, so four of them must have been yellow. Anyhow, this wasn't asked by the question, so I won't discuss it any further. Check out the supporting website for these videos, and also consider subscribing to the YouTube channel and get an automatic update every time I upload a new video. Also consider subscribing to the Google Plus Circle that relates to these videos.